I strongly believe in only uploading when I have something important to say. And this time, I want to show you something that is much more important than the camera brands or lenses or the type of editing software you're gonna use. Something that is affordable for any filmmaker and actually makes a difference. If you don't know about this, I'll guarantee your videos will never look as cinematic as you'd like them to. Before hitting the record button, there is three things you have to take care of. Aperture, ISO and shutter speed. And they are interdependent, meaning if you tinker with one of them, you need to compensate with one or the other. This makes it difficult to get perfect exposure in uncontrolled situations. Stopping down the lens will get rid of all the bokeh. Cranking the shutter speed will mess up the right amount of motion blur. If you've been doing this for a while, you'll have experienced why ND filters are such an important tool for run and gun filmmaking. Think of them as a pair of sunglasses that reduce the amount of light hitting the sensor. This allows you to keep the aperture wide open and the shutter speed at the correct setting. And thanks to the invention of variable ND filters or VNDs for short, we don't have to bring an entire filter case to every shoot and can save some money in the process. Before doing more research, I was satisfied with this solution and I wouldn't be surprised if you were too. But there is a big problem that comes up from time to time. And this is the reason why this newer variable ND and CPL filter is such an important piece of kit. Most VNDs that you'll find on the market consist of two rotatable polarizing filters that are directly screwed on the front of your lenses. The problem is that one of the two elements now has a fixed position that cannot be controlled unless you're partially unscrewing the entire filter. And the result is the loss of control over polarized light hitting the sensor. Let me show you why this is so important. Polarized light becomes relevant when filming the sky, the ocean, plants, cars, screens, you get the idea. Since the base of the VND and CPL filter can be rotated in relation to your camera sensor, you can cut the glare and capture much richer looking footage. I've spent months refining my color grading process in order to create footage that evokes depth. Sometimes this filter just feels like a cheat code for achieving better results. People in the industry have accepted how important ND filters are. Too few of us know about the value of an added CPL filter. You'd be surprised how substantial the effect of cutting out the glare can be and you'd be shocked to understand how necessary it can be from time to time. Let's talk about filter strength. Not all of them are created equal. They have a certain ND value telling you how many stops of light they can cut out. My preferred choice is ND2 to 32, which is equivalent to 1 to 5 stops of light. Even with the ridiculously high second base ISO of 12,800 that Sony's video cameras have, 1 to 5 stops is still just perfect for the projects I'm regularly shooting. And with all this out of the way... If you're a filmmaker, you'll likely already own at least one ND filter. And so did I. Is it really worth it then to replace those with yet another quote-unquote must-have? Listen, I'm not gonna try to sell you stuff that I don't believe in. And I'm not going to pretend that this little filter is the secret to unlocking Hollywood-level quality. What I am going to leave you with is the fact that it does make a difference. It doesn't matter if you're shooting outdoors or indoors with natural light or artificial light it does make a difference. And I believe in spending money on equipment that actually unlocks new possibilities.